Hello, I'm Dr. Maria Grandi, and I'm a physician at Student Services, Student Health Services, here at Brock University, with a special interest in mental health. Today, we're going to look at some alternate ways of, for you to deal with the stressors in your life. Hopefully, methods that are more productive, more healthy, and will allow you to move forward and achieve whatever goal it is that you wish to achieve. Remember, if you wish to change, you have to actually be open to think, feel, and behave differently. A habit takes 12 weeks to change. Patience is a virtue in this case. Consider what I'm about to present as an opportunity for you to move from being stuck to being free. Today's segment will consist of the following two topics, hope and then emotions. Welcome. We're uh, working on um, the session today will be on hope. Hope is really about trying to move from a place where you feel that there is no hope and there is no reason to go on. Um, a lot of people who get quite depressed are hopeless. So the concept of hope is very important in mood disorders. Any change involves hope. And today, you're going to learn about two components for building your own hope, uh, should that be a bit of a low level. First, I'd like to ask, what does hope mean to either of you? I think, um, for me, it means like looking towards the future and kind of um, your like process of getting to where you want to be and um, your perception of how it that process is going to be, whether it's like positive or negative. Excellent. Very good. So you've included that, the process of hope and the concept of per, the, the perception of where it's going as giving hope, right? Do you have anything? Mm, kind of the same, just like being able to achieve something, like knowing that um, there will be something better than what you have. So improvement yeah, yeah. is very important. Right. Sometimes hope is harder, isn't it, when you don't have those go those sights in line, right? And for uh, depression and severe anxiety, that happens quite often. One of the things that allows us to have hope is knowing a bit about what our brains do and how we can change it. So if you think about brains, one of the things that's really important is knowing that your brain can change. Just like plasticine, it's very malleable. If you don't use it, of course, it'll harden and you have set paths. So if you're stuck somewhere and it's really hard to move around, you may think that you could never change. But knowing that the brain will allow you to change can sometimes provide enough hope that you can make a few small changes to move forward because once you do that you can build your motivation so memories and motivation help to bring hope to a place where it may move you to a, a better a better place in your life so memory as um, you may or may not know within the brain again this is a brain process it's not just some esoteric type of thing Memories are built of all the senses we have. And therefore, if you understand the brain, you know that parts of the brain have kinesthetic, so parts of the brain have vision, and all the parts of a memory are wired together between those parts of the brain. So the more you tend to use that memory, the more connected those fragments within the brain are. So sometimes with post-traumatic stress disorder, for example, the, the concept of whatever happened has been so ingrained that one thing can set them off. Like, for example, if it was rape, then perhaps what the music was playing in the background could send somebody falling into you know, another depression. So if you want to work on hope, you have to work on changing those patterns and introducing new patterns. 
so that the sound of that song hopefully doesn't send you to the same place. So that's how the, um, the, the brain and its memory cells will help you to build new hope, is to build new connections. And um, if you were walking on a path and you kept doing the same path, what would you expect? Same outcome. Same outcome. And also you'd see the path would get more and more defined, be easier and easier to find, be automatic, right? So the motivation component of hope and um, means motivation means to move, Latin roots. So to develop motivation, not only do you have to have the brain ability, you also have to be able to activate that. So I need you, if you don't mind, to uh, uh, grab some paper, a small piece is fine. So what we're going to do is an exercise about um, motivation, how to activate it. So with your paper, I'm going to just read what I'd like you to do, and then you can decide to write it down. So first of all, if you can focus enough to decide what it is you want. Um, so it's the what of, it, of motivation. So what is it? Is it to get out of bed in the morning? Okay, so it can be as simple as that. So make a decision about something that perhaps you want to motivate yourself to do. Simple though, please. Be as specific as you can be. Not I want to be happy. Um, specific. Once you've got the what it is, then you have to think about the why. If you can put that in your own values, that'll help you. And the last step, of course, is to ha the how. So we've got the what, we've got the why, we've got the how. Okay. Would you like to start, Dan? Sure. So my what was to try and exercise more or specifically like three days a week. Um, and this why was to kind of improve my health as well as overall happiness. Um, and my how uh, would be to write it into my agenda. So like plan to make time um, so that I can hold myself accountable for it. Excellent. Putting it in the agenda is something not a lot of people remember to do, mm -hmm. right? So that's a very good strategy. How about yourself, um, Becca? I went have a day where I'm not hard on myself. So um, to be like happier and more confident. So say in school, like to be not as hard on assignments. Mm -hmm. And then um, understand that there will be good and bad parts to a day at school. Okay. Thank you. So building... Uh, hope requires this type of motivation. So, have I? Has there been anything today in this session that perhaps seemed a bit new to you, uh, or may help you with your friends, yourself, as far as for your for anyone for their hope building? I think um, breaking down just the word hope is something that's different for me at least because. When I think like I hope to exercise more, I don't think that it for me it would hold myself accountable for it. But when you break it down and say like this is the process, this is the path, then it seems more achievable. Right. Very well put. Anything else to um, add? Just to not follow the same path if that's not where you really want to go. That don't be afraid of like going off that path and not having the same outcome. Yes. Right. And uh, again, it's, it takes a bit of practice, doesn't it, to move forward like that. So hope is more than a wish. And again, that's what we talked about today, that it takes some type of energy for, for that to happen. And it's, it involves 
inner part. It involves the brain, and it involves your thoughts, your beliefs, um, and your actions. Thank you for joining us today. Hello. Thanks for coming. Uh, today we're going to talk about some emotional issues and how to recognize emotions and the role emotions play in our lives. There are three components of an emotion that um, will help you to get to the unknown uh, of labeling emotions, of feeling emotions, and the, the use of having the ability to name and identify your emotions gives you insight, emotional insight which is very important when you want to develop a close relationship with anybody, male, female, parent, doesn't matter, co-workers, uh, very important to have a meaningful relationship. So what I'd like to ask you is, have you ever felt that you couldn't name a feeling, that you were so overwhelmed? Does that ever happen to either of you? Yeah. Okay, so you've been there. Okay. Have you been able to manage to work your way out of it or or not or did it take a lot of time for you? Usually it takes a lot of time yeah. so when you're that that stage. Okay. So for, it's a very time consuming and energy consuming yeah. process. So what we'll do is we'll talk about emotional insight and sort of what goes into the emotional insight and then we can see how the, con the components of an emotion will work towards the insight. So the, the three components then are self-observation and internal attention. What does that kind of phrase that mean? It's kind of a lot of words, but what would it mean? Maybe looking just at yourself without um, trying to take in any of the outside world's opinions or thoughts. Mm -hmm. So you really have to just focus on your own Self. So focusing on your own self is very important without the outside world. Um, just understanding what emotion you're feeling. So is it like more of a happier feeling, sad, frustrated? Um, so just like reflecting on yourself. Yes, and some people have an awful lot of difficulty actually naming emotions. There is a name for that, by the way, um, where you don't know what they are. Some people only have five emotions. Mad, glad, sad, bad, and okay. That doesn't get you far. Um, developing a language so that you can identify something is very important. There's many ways of doing that, but we won't go into that today. Mindfulness is a, a, a method of internal attention. Verbalization. Again, so we went from the internal, now we're going to verbalization. How do you think that gives you insight? Maybe actually saying it makes it more real and like it shows that you're or you might actually understand the way you're feeling because you, you're able to verbalize it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would say about this one. Yeah. Again, it's an awareness type of thing. So it's an internal awareness becoming more external awareness, which actually will reinforce what you're experiencing. And that's what emotions are, an experience. So you're developing the fullness of that. So the insight comes with this awareness. Lastly, social feedback to develop insight. What do you think that's about? Um, just other people letting you know how those emotions have like affected them and you. So say if you're really like angry towards someone, um, if they let you know that, maybe you didn't mean to have that emotion. Mm -hmm. Right, because if you can't communicate this emotion, communication is a very big part of it, then what's, it's not doing what it's supposed to do for you. So you get the feedback. Um, anything else? Uh, no, I kind of had the same view as, as Becca. Okay. So basically those are the components of insight. So the, um, the components of emotions, we're going to basically look at that right now. So there's arousal, emotional arousal, and Again, uh, do you have any concept of what that might mean? If you think of an arousal, you can think of it in different ways, but uh, we're not thinking of it in that way. <laughs> so bodily sensations. Think of an emotion that um, you feel in your body. 
Can you identify something that you feel in your body before you feel any anywhere else? If you want to like deal with that emotion, kind of. Just something happens and it's a, it's it's within you, and it's actually based on um, the the hand slap emotions of the concept of stress, where it's fight, fight, or flight, freeze, freeze. The concept of emotional arousal is a total body uh, response, whereby is the the choice between freezing, not defending yourself, fighting, defending yourself, or flight, flight, running away. So those are the three bodily responses normally that we have that are very protective, and it's instinctive. So you don't even know it's happening. You sort of go so quickly. So that's your arousal, emotional expression. Any ideas about what that might be? Um, so say if you start like crying mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> or are like smiling or have like an angry face, mm -hmm. um, like just your overall expression. Yes. Yeah, it could be like your bo total body language too, maybe not just your facial expressions, mm -hmm. but the way you're standing Mm -hmm. like that. So behavior is very important, body posture. One thing that some people don't remember is that non-expression is actually a choice for emotional expression. You choose not to demonstrate your emotions and we've all met people like that and they're very difficult to quote read, to interact with. So non-expression is also important, and non-verbal, which you already mentioned, with body. The last one is the emotional experience. This is the trickier one. So an experience happens where? Anywhere. Anywhere, and within yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's not really able to be shared, but part of emotions is sharing, okay? So that can happen for example, um, within your gut also, where it's a physical emotion that, you know, it makes you, your shoulders tense up, right? And then you start to think, my shoulders are up, why are they up? And then it's like, oh my goodness. So that, that made me aware that I had, was experiencing emotion. So then you label it. And that was what I was just about to do, was I must be really anxious about something. And then what you do is you go to the next stage where you actually look at what it means to you. For example, when I'm putting my shoulders up hunching, and there's, you know, basically like it's a fight or flight, right? So it's really more fight, uh, getting ready for that. Uh, maybe somebody said something to me or did something to me that was disrespectful and I don't like being disrespected so I'm willing to stand up for my own self-respect by taking that issue on so again some people have to get to an emotional an emotion through their body and then feel it label it and give it meaning so those are the three components of an emotion um, so, um, let's just look at what you might respond to yourselves, if you have, uh, we can do it with paper, without paper, let's do it without. Suppose you had a huge fight with your best friend, very best friend. Automatically, what do you want to do? Probably yell at them. Yell? Maybe cry. Cry. That's my first choice too. <laughs> So then, as soon as you, you do that part, what would happen next? So you have the fight, you feel like you want to cry, you want to... Like, get, like, up, uh, bring your voice up. Bring your voice up. So, so your emotions are starting to kick in with the r r rising voice. Anything that might happen to you emotionally? So not physically, uh -huh. emotionally. I guess you're just really upset and sad. Very sad. Because this is the meaning. What meaning 
does this fight with your best friend have to you? What does it mean when you have a fight with your friend? That you're arguing and not agreeing on something. It's usually on like a bigger level though. Take it, take it a little further if you don't mm -hmm. mind, Becca. So you're arguing. So what does, so you're arguing. That can happen anytime. How, how is this different for you? You might like lose a friendship out of it. Yes, the feeling of being abandoned, mm -hmm. for example. That's a big thing in a lot of mental health issues is that you're not loved, you're going to be abandoned. Right? So that may be one of the things that's going on in there. Are there any other things that might, Deanna, for you? Yeah, uh, I think the feeling of abandonment or feeling like um, someone that you trusted has turned on you. Yes. Yes. Someone has turned on you. Someone you've trusted and loved, cared for, all of a sudden isn't demonstrating that. Mm -hmm. That's rejection. Mm -hmm. Right? So again, if you look at what, where things are coming from, and sometimes you can step away and you can say, well, you know, do your breathing and say, this is an emotion and the rationality may come into this once you get past all the reflexes. Wisdom is what we hope to achieve once we actually can understand our emotions and be able to put the rational part with it. So that's what wisdom is. Emotions plus rational going together quite like this. Any questions? No. Yep. Yep. Thank you for joining uh, me today, and I hope you have a lovely evening. <laughs>